Today we are focusing on the most important part on the 3D environment of DaVinci Resolve, lightning. And trust me, at the end of this tutorial you know exactly how the lights work and how to use it with confidence. So to make a 3D text I go over here to the effects tab, down here on effects I've got the fusion composition, I drag and drop it into my timeline and you see here no frame available for media out. So we take this fusion clip and open it up in the fusion. So you see we have only the media out, this is why no frame is available. So take from here a background node, drag and drop it and connect it to the media out and you have your frame available. So this is the basic start you need to do when you take a fusion composition. And I think the easiest way to start is hit shift and spacebar and type in text 3D and press enter. So we have our 3D text right here. And now it's very important before we move on that you understand the difference between 2D and 3D environment. So basically everything you edit in DaVinci Resolve is in a 2D space because it's basically a flat image or a flat video that you are editing. And here in the Fusion we have access to the 3D space with, for example, this text 3D node. But the issue is that we can't connect it directly here. Let's say this is our 2D space and up here we build our 3D space. We can't connect it directly. So we need to tell DaVinci we want to go from this 3D back to the 2D space. So that means for this text 3D node we need a merge 3D node to merge everything together we want to have in the 3D space and to render it out we need here the render 3D. So with these nodes here we can connect them back down here to the background here and then we merge them together. So up here is the 3D space we need the render to render it out back in the 2D space. I hope you can follow along with these two steps that's very important to understand. For better understanding and for better adjusting, I take here the Merge 3D into the left viewer right here. So here on the right viewer, I have my media out, so the final image. And here on the left viewer, I have always my Merge 3D because inside here, I can see exactly what I have plugged together, where are my lights, where is my text, and I can adjust it right there very easily. You will see that later in that tutorial. So first things first, go back to your text 3D node and type in whatever you want. Adjust it to your liking until you're happy with your text. And now you can see here in the 3D environment when I rotate it by holding down Option or Alt and pressing the mouse wheel, you can rotate it here around with Command or Control. You can zoom in or out and like that you can navigate very quickly through the 3D space. And you also see here this blue, red and green arrow. These are the different axes we, we have in the 3D space. And by just dragging them, I can easily move them around here in the 3D space. And you see directly how your final image looks. So this is the basic setup I use always in all my 3D uh, animations. So now we want to make this actually 3D. So with the text 3D node selected here on the text tab, scroll all the way down, you have extrusion. And here you can give some depth to your text and you see it's already getting 3D just like that. You can play around here with the settings so you can give some bevel depth. So the, the edges are a little bit softer and not, not that edgy and just play around here with the settings until you think it looks very good for now. Later when we add the light maybe you need to readjust some things that you really like the look of it. But let's say this 3D looks good for now. But the issue is it's just a flat looking 3D text, nothing special. And this is where the lights come in. In this tutorial today we're going to talk about three main lights. The first one is the ambience light, the second one the directional light and the third one is the spotlight. These are the three lights we'll talk about today and I will show you exactly how to use it and how they work. So for that I hit shift and spacebar. First I type in ambience light, press enter. I put it somewhere around here. Once again hit shift and spacebar, type in directional light. I put this one up here. And the last one is the spotlight and I put it up here. So first we're going to start here with the ambience light and maybe you've tried it before. You took a light node inside here, plug it into the Merge 3D and 
nothing is happening. You're place, replacing it here in the 3D space, but nothing really is adjusting here to the lights and it didn't work. What's very important to understand is you need to enable it. So for that, go here to the render 3D before everything renders out back into the 2D space. Then over here in the inspector, down here you see lightning. Enable here lights and shadows. And you see now we have just a little bit of light. So the ambient light, when I turn it off, you see now everything is black. Here in the final image, of course, not here in the merge. This one is only for adjusting the lights. Here, take a look at the final image. So when I turn it back on, we have just a little ambient light. It doesn't matter where you place it in your scene. You can place it back here. You can place it there. It doesn't matter. You have just that soft ambient light in your background. Here in the inspector, you can adjust the intensity, how strong this ambient light should be, or you can change the color, but the position doesn't really matter. So this is just a little ambient light. Then we move on with the directional light. Plug it into your Merge 3D and you see already it gets affected very well. So I can drag it back here. You can see when I drag it back and forth, nothing is really happening. So with the directional light, it doesn't matter where you place it. It only matters the angle from where the, the light comes. So you see here, the light comes all the way here from the front. So when I select the directional light and go to transform, down here on rotation, I can rotate the light. And you see here in your final image, as soon as I rotate it, the light comes from, from another angle. So you see now the light comes in from here from the right side and it gets affected here from the right side. And it doesn't matter if I place it behind the text here. It doesn't matter where it is. It only matters the angle from where you point it. And of course, you can adjust the intensity, how strong this light should be as well. So quick summary from the ambience and the directional light. The ambience light just gives some ambience light. It doesn't matter where to place it. The directional light, it doesn't matter where to place it. Only the angle, how you rotate it to your text. And the final one for today is the spotlight. So plug it in and right now you see nothing because we are here at zero. When we drag it back, you can see here the spotlight is appearing. So the spotlight is the hardest to adjust because it shines directly into that direction. You see it here in, in your overall view. So when I drag it over here, the light gets over there. And when I change the direction here on the transform node, it, it really is always spot on because it's, it's a spotlight. It's not that easy to adjust as the other two lights. And for that, I've got a very easy trick. So I reset here everything. And down here on pivot, you have this box here, use target. Enable this checkbox and your target will always be here on zero, zero, zero. You can adjust, of course, when I drag this back here, you can see this is the target the spotlight always points on. So I reset this. So long story short, it doesn't matter where I place my spotlight now, it's always pointing to my text. And this makes your life a whole lot easier, especially with the spotlight. So let's say I want to place my spotlight somewhere up here. I think that looks very nice. And when we have our spotlight selected on the controls, we can adjust a lot with that. So for example, here, the clone angle is how, how wide your, your spotlight shines. And here, the second slider is how soft your light should be. So here you can see the, the edge is, is very hard. So we have here light and shadow. And with the second slider, you can make it way softer. So then place your light where you want it to have. Maybe you want to add a second light. So just select here this spotlight, copy it over, delete the merge node. You can plug it directly here in to the same merge node. And then you can just replace it maybe down here where you want to have it. And of course, I not only want to talk about lightning, I also want to talk about shadow. So I want to place back here behind the text, just a flat image plane just like that, image plane 3D and connect it to the merge 3D. And you already see we have here a little bit of shadow here. So when I take this image plane, go to transform, I adjust it to around five. 
or let's say seven, make it big enough. And here with the set move, I place it a bit more back here. And now when I play around here with the spotlight, you can see the shadow gets affected very naturally. So this is a very nice looking effect. So let's say you don't want to have here this flat white background. You have an image or a video you want to have in the background. So just drag and drop it. This is just a really simple stock footage um, from, from a background, nothing really special. And simply connect it now to your image plane and you've got it as a background. Of course, with the image plane selected, you can reposition the background where you want it to have. You can make it even bigger or you can do several adjustments to it like in your normal videos. So you can even put maybe a soft glow in it or you can do a color corrector and make it a little bit darker for example so you have endless options how to do with that i only want to show you how to put a background inside it to have this realistic shadow on it so the last step is we add a camera 3d so we can pretty much fly around our 3d text now so up here you've got the 3d camera just plug it also into your merge 3d you see everything comes together in the merge 3d it looks very weird now but with the camera selected here in your left viewer you have this blue arrow just drag your camera back until your final image looks good again and now here we can do the same thing as with the spotlight down here in transform pivot you have use target so when i take my camera i can drag it over here and you see it always points to this direction and it really looks 3d just like we want it to have and now here it's up to you how you want to place your lightning, your camera. Maybe you want to keyframe it so it starts from the left side and go over to the right side and the, the light changes in the different directions. Here is your creativity up to you. I just wanted to show you the basic lights, how they work in a 3D environment. And I really hope it was helpful for you. With that said, have fun creating and see you in the next one.